Hey everybody, how's it going? So welcome back to Planet Coaster and of course World of UMU. So our 90s and noughties park expanded last week with a hydraulic launch coaster from Interman. And this week we're going to be taking inspiration from the future to build a coaster from the past. It'll make sense, I promise. Yeah, that's right, you guys. So despite the fact that I am more Ronan than human, we're still going to do an episode because it's important that we carry on. And I feel all right in myself, but it's been a bit of a rough ride. Like, I still look at the Rona tests now and it just goes, get your riddled face out of my space. It's like been proper rough. But hey, it's all right. We're carrying on. So I hope you understand that this is going to be a bit of a, a watered down episode because I do still feel pretty rubbish. But this week we are looking into Legoland Windsor for our inspiration. Uh, we're going straight over for their, <laughs> we're coming straight at their boom boomerang coaster their junior boomerang that they've just announced um so planet coaster doesn't like really what i've done here so i need to talk you through this and there are lots of trade-offs to make this work but it works right so this is the this is the key thing the uh, layout itself is actually really really simple so you do have this inclined lift hill uh, which you will notice is not a lift hill but you have an inclined lift hill and then it comes into an airtime hill into this curve bend where it duels for the first time it comes underneath itself over itself and then into the second spike which is the second lift hill here uh, and then it just reverses the course and it goes it goes backwards and does what it needs to do right so that's in itself relatively like the Legoland Windsor. I have taken some creative liberties, like for example, the track doesn't cross over as much as it does here on the actual plans that have been released, but I'm all right with that. I think uh, I think creative liberty is needed here. So how did I achieve this in Planet Coaster? Well, bloody, bloody good question, I tell you, uh, because this was hard work. This was far more hard work than was needed. The SLZ SLV, when you are using no mods, is the only coaster that you can achieve this on. I tried the Torque, I tried the other launch coasters. It's anything that's got the reverse, uh, the reverse launch to it, right? And you, for the SLVs, you can't actually make it go out of the station straight into a, a lift hill like you can do the other boomerangs, right? So in real life, these four spikes here would all be lift hills. Uh, but in game, what I've had to do is allow it to leave the station, hit a reverse launch here, which is only, I think this is uh, six or eight meters long. It's not long at all. Set that to as fast as I can possibly make it go so that it goes through the station and then up the uh, up the spike. And then it goes back down because it runs out of momentum. Back down through the station, through the actual course itself. Blah, 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 blah. That bit's all fine. You know, you do that as you normally would. And then you get to your final spike and then you put another reverse, um, another reverse launch that goes right to the top of the lift hill here. That then sends it backwards at the speed that you request it to go backwards and then it completes the course uh, in reverse and it comes back to the station here. It's important that you uh, have the setting on the actual station itself set to shuttle launched and station passes times three. You can have it times two, it'll just stop in the station once it's once it returns, right? But times three for me because I want it to go through the station and back down again. And then of course you set the number of cars. Now we do know elephant in the room that the SLV is only for adults and teens in game and this would actually be a boomerang coaster that's aimed at family and kids, right? So it's a trade-off. I can't do anything about it. The Nexus mod doesn't work. Stop telling me about it because I'm, I'm fed up with telling you that it doesn't work. And uh, it is what it is, right? We are able to do it because of the SLV. No other um, type of coaster in game would allow us to do it. Now, let's talk about the lore of this because, yes, we are dealing with a future concept coaster from uh, potentially Vacoma or Ziera or whoever it may be. We don't actually know who the manufacturer is. Um, we are dealing with that, but I wanted this to actually be the Schwarzkopf. I wanted it to actually be a Schwarzkopf in this park because it felt like this was one of the coasters that was put in in the very early days of the park when it was in the 80s, right? So that's kind of the vibe that we are going for here. Old coaster, but future layout see i told you it makes sense like it makes sense uh, in terms of queue line um so the actual queue line for the legoland windsor coaster is one single queue line and then it splits at the station so it would split here um but for planet coaster obviously we have to have two queue lines so it wraps around itself and it's fine this would hold about two hours worth of people maybe slightly more it's probably no longer actually than the um than the boomerang coaster actually is then what i'm also doing here is i'm i'm bringing the exit path down underneath the 
uh, underneath the queue line path, and then it's going to come up this way, and then back out into this plaza area here. I need to make all of this make sense. This is exactly how the uh, Legoland Windsor one is laid out, because it's on a hill and stuff. Um, the plans are a little bit difficult to work out as to what the strategy is, like there's a lift and stuff in here, but... It's fine. I'll work it out. And then over here, this is not going to be this episode. I may do some, like, initial work to it, but this is not going to get done in this episode. But this is the, the whole strategy for coming down from the invert up to the top of the uh, chairlift and the, to and the top of this roller coaster here. So I, I have some inspiration. I need to play it out and I need to do some stuff here. But this is kind of what I'm thinking, that you'd have all of these stairs going up here, all of these stairs going up here. It splits off in a couple of directions so you can split all of the traffic and stuff. This would just be one central big plaza area here. Uh, and then you'd have like water features and rock formations and flowers, flower beds and all of that sort of stuff going on in here. You don't necessarily need a ramp to come up this way because you do have the chairlifts to get up here, right? So you do have disabled access over the other side if you wanted to get up here. But I do think I need to find some kind of ramp strategy. I just don't know what that is yet. But I don't need to. That's what I'm saying is if I don't, I don't need to because you do have access via the cable cars. Anyway, that's uh, the Rona talking. Waffle, waffle, waffle. I'm just going to shut up and I'll see you in a minute. <laughs> now there is something to be said for laying in bed and feeling like absolute filth. You do get a ton of inspiration that comes at you and then you do quickly realise that you probably need to distract yourself from how you're actually feeling and then this is kind of what happens in that situation. I lied and I got a little bit carried away. <laughs> By the way, COVID brain fog is an actual thing. Like I'm really struggling to talk. It's like I'm drunk. So this is going to be a bit of a roller coaster ride. But Eagle Eyed Amongst You will spot some very familiar architecture particularly if you're knowing all about Ripley's Aquarium in the Smoky Mountains and also the island in Pigeon Forge as well so I mean if you look at this this is just taken straight from Ripley's and I'm not even sorry absolutely love how this is though this is the type of architecture that I wanted in this in this space so this is uh, this is what we're going for now I'm going to show you the coasters first for some reason they've stopped dueling and I don't know why they're still triggered they're still chained and whatever but they're just really not playing games so whatever uh, we'll just leave them doing what it was but the reason I got carried away was because this was all I was going to present to you and I felt a little bit bad I didn't I don't want these coasters to be anything particularly special I don't want them to be grandiose. I don't want them to you know be OTT or anything they're just supposed to be here on top of the hill and they were built in the 80s so you know uh, they, they didn't need a lot of uh, a lot of stuff by the way these are Schwarzkopf's they are not for comas. I don't know if I said that in the first uh, in the first update. The layout is obviously taken from the Vacoma coasters at I think I know why it's not dueling. Uh I think the settings have changed. I've just watched that do that. Um I'll check on that anyway. Sorry. So the, this is a Schwarzkopf. This is not a Vacoma. I know that the layout is based on the new Vacoma coasters at Legoland Windsor. So let's not get confused. And I know that some of you are going to start picking apart things like lift hills and spikes and whatever, but this is supposed to be Schwarzkopf. Anyway, Wanted open station, uh, so this is what I'm going for. Going for here, I I had had it completely open, like these um, sun awnings and stuff here. They weren't even here, remotely here. Uh, but I thought no, it needed something. It was too it was too open and exposed. So uh, that's what we're doing. The control box then is up here. I did originally have it straddling both tracks, just like the Legoland Windsor one does. But actually, it felt like it was too big um, because Planet Coaster's scale right means that. We're there. These are far too far apart from each other, but we're dealing with planet coaster scale, and there's not really a lot that we can do about it, right? So I've kind of done the same with the control with the control box. It just lives in the middle, and off we go. We we job done. I have started to kick out, kick out, kit out. Oh, guys, seriously, uh, kit out the inside of here um, with all of the usual control panel stuff that you would find. Uh, so this is all looking sweet. And then I started to connect it up to the actual station platform as well, making sure that we've got fire exits and and whatever going on here. And then lots and lots of high level fencing going on. So I did want a wooden fence, and that's what we have got here. So we've got wooden fences along the bridges and stuff. And then I've just put in some of the retaining walls along here this is this idea that i wanted this uh, pathway to be in a pit rather than going up the side of the hill um i don't know if it's going to work uh, it's it's there and that's kind of what we're going for I've, it, there's a precedent it's there's um 
Thought Park has got an area like this. So is Alton Towers. So, uh, yeah, whatever. It works. This is the queue line then. And, uh, again, the fence just carries on all along this side. And then it carries on down this way. And I've just then made sure to bring in the uh, the cheaper fencing in the middle here. So I've sort of bring brought the, the two queues either side to each other with actual expensive fencing between them. And then you've got the... Uh, the cheap fence in the middle so i just need to put the concrete and stuff down on here just to shut it off and get rid of the extra bits of fences as well because that's how i build <laughs> so having a look at the extra stuff then so this is how it's looking from the top and guys this is uh yeah this is pretty much how i how i imagined it in my feverish dreams um dealing with planet coaster dealing with solid lines and stuff like this is actually really really difficult uh particularly when you're dealing with multi-levels and whatever so i think this is gonna we're gonna pull this off quite nicely and if you do have a look at uh ripley's aquarium and the smoky mountains you'll know exactly what i'm trying to achieve it's that idea of multi-levels steps going down um and then bits of foliage bits of rock maybe a water feature or two somewhere if i can fit them in uh just to sort of break this up and make this feel like a little bit of more of a natural uh, natural area just to let you know i did do a ramp it felt like a bit of a dick move to to not put ramps in for our disabled friends so i've put a ramp in this way and then there's another ramp that goes up this way so you don't actually have to take this take the stairs uh, so this is what we are going for over on this part of the building we're going for a metal uh metal roof and then wooden frame and stuff and then this is going to be a seating area and stuff under underneath here i mean i did toy with this being the gift shop but this felt like actually it lent itself more to being a restaurant particularly as if i change the camera this is the sorts of views that you're going to get across the park and ah oh, yes it's just looking so good like it's everything you wanted it to be in a uh, in a view so inside here not really much has been done i've just kitted it out with some stuff right just to just to make it functional for now it needs uh, decorating whether that's going to be this episode I don't know because I genuinely do feel unwell but I'm just playing out some inspiration so whether I get this done or not I don't know watch this space I probably will <laughs> And then uh, coming across this way this is a another uh, on the side of the hill building I didn't want this one to have any sort of open patio area I just wanted this to to look out across everything from a window right so these are the sorts of views that you're going to be getting and now this is because there's there is actually quite a drop that goes down uh, that side and you've also got a plaza area down here for if you imagine not i'm pointing down this way um yeah there's a plaza area down there where people where guests are going to congregate so you don't really want to put guests uh on a on a patio that can throw things down right so this is the uh the view you're going to get out of the other window and then this is the sort of style that i'm going for here um it, it needs a bit of work it needs a bit of love just to make it all make sense but uh yeah chacho toilets are here so uh i said i was going to put toilets in down by the um the other canadian tea house that we did well, actually, the toilets ended up being more so here. Uh, fits quite nicely underneath this building. I quite like how this is how this has turned out. Uh, so it's pretty much finished in here. It just needs a bit of love and a bit of TLC, a bit of touching up, you know, theme makers toolkit and whatever uh, to come along in here. But I quite like this mix of floor. The tiles just work perfectly in that uh, in that respect so that's the building as it's looking and then we've done loads of work here to the uh, skyride building it's now got a name by the way and i've got to get this right because this is, it's difficult enough to talk as it is i've called it wilder mew views and it was a suggestion um on the community tab a couple of months ago actually when the when the series first started it was a bit of a missed opportunity so yeah wilder mew views uh, is what this one's called and i've taken the inspiration from the cable cars again in smoky mountains and um, going up to the I, I can't even pronounce the, the the name of the adventure place so just google it but it's a direct rip and um, because i loved how that building uh, how that building looked so of course it's going to have another metal roof and stuff on here but I love how this is now just approaching the top of the hill and how seamlessly it integrates into the hill. Given that the other side, it's so it's it's completely flat. It's completely straight from station to uh, the other station other than the little bit of here over here where we've put in an, a raised station. Right. So it just gives you the idea of how this park goes from quite a low level to a high level towards the back because yeah it just gets the terrain just gets higher and higher and higher as you get back to this station and then it's actually at ground level and i like that i like that split level feeling uh, that we've got that we've got going on here so another um another building that's been taken from the smoky mountain uh, adventure park 
I'm going to call it that, uh, is this building here. So it needs detailing and stuff. This would all be glass. This would be metal. Um, and then this would have metal uh, ceilings and stuff. All it is, it's just a, uh, I think this one's fries, uh, fries and drinks. Nothing, nothing special going on in here. And then this one is taken from uh, what looks like a hotel, actually next door to the aquarium um so i wanted this uh, i wanted this building it was just a no-brainer it's actually a two-story building in real life but i've taken off the top story and it works better as a lower as a lower level building in the middle we've got a gift shop because we haven't had a gift shop in a while um so it's all got your gift shoppy type stuff in here you know you're familiar with the stuff that i use um just need to do the fine details a bit of decorating and making it make uh, make making it all make sense and then inside here we've got burritos nothing done in on the inside in here in fact you can see the ceilings missing as well um nothing done on the inside here but uh it will be and then likewise the other side this is going to be a sweet shop and this is going to be uh relatively similar actually to the one that i did in raygate lake and uh in fundy fun spot so i'm just going to take inspiration from the design uh, from there so i actually need to get on and do that and then of course the final bit on here to show you is that i have reprofiled the, uh, the the inverts queue. So this was originally a cattle pen that came down here, but when I started to put all of this in and I ran out of space, uh, it actually needed a little bit of breathing space for some terrain to come down here. So what I've done is I've taken the queue line round the back, put it into a smaller cattle pen, and then brought it back round here. And now it feels a little bit more consistent with the other queue lines that we have got in the park. And then just final bits of terrain that I'm putting in where you can start to see where plaza areas and stuff are going to come together. You can start seeing it taking a shape uh, and taking a form. Uh, and so with that in mind, this is how it's looking from the top. And I'll see you when it is done. All right, then, you guys. So this week's Done For Now stamp is coming out. I am still testing positive. I've kind of run out of steam and I really should probably go and get some rest. Now, I am proper chuffed with this week's result, given that I was only going to be doing a coaster. Some of the shop interiors aren't done. I'm all right with that. There's tomorrow me's problem. This is what we've got going on here. Like, I wasn't supposed to be doing any of this stuff, but thanks to a fever, it kind of worked out quite nicely. And I've got quite a lot to show you, actually, in this one. We are going to start with the coaster, though, because obviously this is supposed to be the focus of the episode here, right? And I've done quite a bit of touching up since the last update. Some of the stuff wasn't quite feeling so right. So, for example, some of the supports, I've just redone some of the supports and whatever. I've decided not to custom support the lift hills the in-game supports are you know perfectly good enough so it is it is what it is but the foliage and everything in this area has actually made it come to life it now feels like this was dug into the side of the hill that's kind of taken shape accidentally right i just did want to put it down like the uh, exit path down this way just because it needed some kind of strategy but now i've put all of this stuff in it does feel like it's been dug into the side of the hill because the hill comes down this way it feels like the original terrain probably would have come down here and because this is all on concrete pads uh, on the top here it just does feel like it's as i said dug in i've made it uh <laughs> i've made it dual properly by the way i fixed the uh i fixed the issue it was to do with the lap passing on this yellow one, I hadn't set it to three, so it was just doing the one and then stopping. So look, it's now dueling properly. <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> so in terms of the station itself, then this is how it's now looking. I'm I'm done with this, right? I like how this is how this is quite open. Um, music, by the way, I've used the Screaminator music because you can pull it onto a loop and it sounds quite very sort of like eighties inspired. So. Uh, you, it's going to be the second time you're going to hear it in the park because we are having a screaminator, but it's it's all good. So uh, the control panel then on control booth, it's all done. We've got this little lady uh, that's at the top here look, overlooking everything. Hello, love. Uh, and then I've just put some kind of maintenance area and stuff in the uh, in the background here. So on, underneath this just to give it a bit of life. So, yeah, a bit of flood lighting and that's all it's needed. It's nice and open. It does what it needs to do. And talking to maintenance areas, by the way, I didn't show you this in the last update but this is exactly how the Legoland Windsor uh, coaster is going to deal with the maintenance area it's going to be in the front part of the um, uh, front part of the the hill it's going to be cut into the hill and it's just going to be this concrete area and this is exactly what I'm doing in here it's nothing oh that's a, it's going through the pillar I need to tidy that up um, <laughs> so there's nothing particularly special going on in here uh, forgive the clipping by the way it's nothing I can do with that I needed to do that uh, because of the uh, because of the terrain and stuff so yeah this is how the Legola Windsor's coaster is going to be dealing with the main maintenance area and then I just joined it up to the main path down this way uh, of course I've not actually kitted out how all of this is going to look yet so 
Watch this space. Uh, watch this space on that one. Uh, by the way, I've also not done the uh, exterior fencing or whatever around here because there is going to be a path and stuff that comes around here in the background. That's, again, future me uh, is needs to deal with that because I don't know whether there's going to be a coaster that comes in this area here. So... Um, yeah, watch this, watch this space. But this is how the coaster is sitting on all of the sight lines. And guys, it's just so much better than I thought it was going to turn out. Especially as I was like, oh, I don't really, I wasn't really feeling it. But it's now, uh, it's now come to life. Now that it's got all of its trees and it now makes sense on the hill, I'm happier with it. Much, much, much happier with it. So moving on to the rest of the area then. Because there is going to be a coaster in this area, by the way. It's going to be a Vacoma looper remember in the uk we didn't have arrow or not the arrow that you guys recognize we did have arrow but you guys in america remember that arrow sublet or subcontracted all of its stuff to vacoma so over here we had vacoma so it's going to be a vacoma looper that's going to sit in this uh, sit in this area here uh, and then there of course will be some supporting rides that i just need to sort out and put in right so Again, tomorrow me's problem. But this is the area. I wanted this to feel like this would have been the area that was developed first when it was a theme park because uh, you would have wanted people to come right to the back of the estate, right? So that's why this coaster here, that's why the Arrow uh, Vacoma coaster. Oh, what a slip. Uh, <laughs> you guys are going to pull me up on that one, I can tell. Um, that's why the Vacoma coaster is going to be back here in supporting rides, right? Because this would have been a beautiful uh, area to be in before it was an entire theme park. So this uh, sky ride would have been put in. And the coasters and stuff would have been put into the back here. So this needed to feel like it was an area that's been around for a while, but has been modernised since. And look at how this now turns out. I've stripped the trees back so it's breathing. Um, and that's primarily because you want to have some pretty decent views from all of your viewpoints, right? So you don't... Hang on, let me get an actual, let me get an actual viewpoint. There you go. So you don't really want to be... Um, cluttering up all of your viewpoints with trees because that defeats the object of, of having them otherwise right so uh, you get some pretty decent views ah oh, yes i love it i love it i love it but uh, yeah sorry as i was saying honestly this this feel like it's like i'm drunk um so I wanted this area to feel like it's been around for a while, but modernised recently. That's why it's all of the uh, sandstone brick. I, I mean, I love Indian sandstone. That's why I've included this in here, um, because I just wanted to give a bit of a pattern and a bit of uh, feeling to this area. I've used it elsewhere. I used it at the um, down by the Junior Coaster, so... It's not the first time we've used this. Uh, but yeah, this is why we're using the yellow sand, sandstone uh, coloured stuff. And I like... I like how this has turned out. So down here we've got the toilets. Uh, so I've just put some theme makers toolkit stuff, all of the typical things. I've just put some other signage and whatever up here and then just finished off inside uh, in here. So it's looking good. It's looking good. I've got something so amazing to show you in a minute. I'm so excited. Uh, Bergs, you can see, has had some kitting up uh, done to it. It's not completely done inside. I'm not entirely happy with the inside here. It is what it is. It's good enough for now. Um, but I do need to come back and I do need to do a more uh, theme makers toolkit related pass. You know, it needs bins and sideboards and posters and all of the usual stuff. But I just... <sighs> I just don't have the energy to do it. I'm sorry. I'm happy with it being a better external experience. Uh, so this is the Skyride station. This now looks incredible. I love it. I love how this has turned out. Again, this needs some theme makers toolkit touching up. Uh, it needs like electric boxes and stuff putting in. I'll deal with that when we get down when we get down the get down the line. For now, I'm just happy with how this has turned out. The structure is perfect. The lighting is perfect. The feeling of it, like, entering into the area is also perfect. So, I'm happy with that. I like it. I like it. Uh, this area, then, is supposed to be designated as a bit of a um, an open area, a bit of a plaza area. And then inside here, we've got our... There we go. Uh, we've got our three units um, of different differing colours. I haven't done much in here. It's another placeholder, I'm afraid. Uh, but it's... Whatever. It's good enough. Uh, the gift shop then. I'm pretty happy with the gift shop. I don't think I need to do much more to it. It does what it needs to do. It's got some lighting going on. And uh, we're, we're happy in here, right? And he's off for a break. So that's cool. And then sweet shop. Again, I've just done some light stuff in here. Um, I, I think I want to go back and just tidy some stuff up. But it's got. It's, you've got the idea. 
the ghost walking through the wall. Stop it. That's by the way, I've done that intentionally because of the staff units and stuff. I'm not going to put barriers in here. I am just going to let them walk through the walls. Um, because of the way that I've had to deal with the paths and stuff in here, it messes with the AI. So forgive the uh, forgive the wall walking. But this is uh, this is how it's looking from this side. Um, I do I do have some touching up I need to do, like the roof and whatever needs a little bit of work. But it gives the you get the idea, right? You get what I'm trying to achieve, uh, what I'm trying to achieve with this, and it looks good as it is. There's, it's just me that notices these small little things, and I just need to rein it in. I'm done for this week. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine so our smaller unit here is also done um it's got a bit of a barn feel to it so i yeah I, i'm all right with this and again the inside is just placeholder stuff for now it needs some more uh, it, it needs some more work but i'm just so tired like it's unreal uh and then down this way our um ripley's aquarium rip off uh, our rip off is is done um I like how this is uh yeah this has come together quite nicely this just gives the the right feel for the area and i'm loving it i'm loving it and then we've just got inside here again it's just placeholder stuff it needs detailing but you already know right so this is the uh th this is the highlight though this is the pinnacle this is uh, rather than working on interiors this is what i have been working on and i'm quite chuffed with this uh there we go. If I just change this to here. There you go. Now you can start to see the inspiration from the island in Pigeon Forge. Uh, because all of the neon lights along the roofs and stuff just make this area come to life. It now feels so warm. It feels like it's been modernized with all of these lights. It feels like... Um, it, it feels like it should, right? It feels like it's it's awesome. And when you come back here... Oh, yeah, you've not seen this ever, by the way. This was in. This has been in since the episode uh, dropped for the <laughs> for the invert. I've just never shown you. Uh, so, yeah, now you can see that this is how it all fits on the, uh, on the skyline. And to be honest with you, it does feel like this area would actually be where the hotel would be. So, mm, maybe. Maybe not don't know uh, but what I've done here is I've I've accented it off with all of this neon lighting I've put lots of the strip lighting um, from the front entrance of the park it's the same it's the same um, format and stuff but it just feels like this would be a bit more of a, a carnivaly type color area let me just change the camera so you can see sort of like around this one it's not actually that much of a good <laughs> much of a good view uh, underneath here I've used lots of colored lights just to give it a bit of atmosphere and ambience um, and then over this way, just the red and the blue shining up on the on the Berg's unit. But yeah, oh, guys, I love how this just looks. It just looks so warm. It just looks so lovely. Oh, I'm chuffed. I'm chuffed. I'm chuffed. I'm chuffed. So this is, uh, oh, the, uh, the coast area, by the way, is very just floodlit. There's not a lot of uh, emotional lighting going on in here, right? It's... Uh... <laughs> It's fine. Uh, I'm done with it. It's it's good. It's good. You got all of the other lighting elsewhere, giving it the warmth and stuff. Uh, so let's have a look at the park, the whole park, right? Because this is uh, a big, a, a big, big old project. We are only about halfway through. So this is how the whole park is looking. We are now as far back as uh, I planned to go. So I've got plans for obviously the hyper, which is going to come in here and take up this space here. I do have plans for this area down here. I've decided that I'm going to fill in this lake for the car park. So our park will come around the back here. It's going to be a coaster in here. It's going to be a coaster in here. I need to find something to go into this space. I need to find something to to go into this space and then of course we all kind of guessed what's coming in this area so uh, that's where it is and then just one more look at the area that we've just finished from this side there we go look at that love it so guys thank you for putting up with my covid riddled brain uh it's been emotional <laughs> i'm off to go and get some sleep thank you for getting this far uh, we're going to go on a ride on those two coasters in a moment of course leave a like and a comment and all the usual stuff for the algorithm uh, but until we speak again please look after yourselves take care now Bye bye <laughs>